Welcome to Center of Light. I am back in the saddle again. <laughs> Welcome everyone. Just got in from South Louisiana from seeing my dad. Had a good trip. Very interesting trip. Life-changing experience. We won't get into that. I may do a presentation on it real soon of what that was all about um, in a positive way. And what I've gleaned and still learning from said experience, as if you can tell my nose. It helps to be a black belt. <laughs> it helps. Uh, I'll explain that. I'm having fun with a life-changing situation. Welcome to Center of Light. Let's see who's here. Hi, Linda. Mary Allen Long says, Yanava. Rick Vito, I was hoping to see you, brother. When I went down to see my dad, Tammy, hi. Tammy Toops. Dana, hi, Dana. Elwood Co-op, brother, thank you for the using of your music equipment. It means the world to me. You mean the world to me. Mary DuPont, I'm not sure if my sister's still here. Ann Duplantis, Kellen Renando, Kristen Davis, Thomas. Let's look in the room over here in another way. Dana, Linda, Kelly, Thomas, Edwin Simpson. What's up, Ed? Guitar playing, gunslinging, fool. Carolyn Elwood, Mary Emelon. Back in the saddle again. A week of being away from what I love. I love my family. That's why I went there. My dad had some tests done because he had triple bypass a year plus ago. Everything looks good. Um, played music. Saw family and friends which is always a delight to me to see them out in public, not only because I love playing music, it's the opportunity for a family reunion, friendship reunion with those people. I've, some of them I haven't seen since I was 16 years old. Meeting friends that find out I came to town and I'm playing music. Uh, it's always a blessing. I want to do a quick announcement. Hello, Melissa McElroy. I love, uh, thank you, Edwin. He says, love what you do, brother. I hope to see you soon, bro. Tomorrow night, come on out and play some guitar. If you're living in Memphis, at Rock House Live Midtown, I do an open mic uh, every Monday night from 7 to 11. The announcement is September 21st and 22nd, Four Points Spiritual Expo, put on by Circle of Chi. That Circle of QI. You can get on Facebook and look it up. Um spiritual holistic fair four points is putting it on victoria smith keynote speakers five of them myself keynote speaker radical transformation crossing to the bridge crossing the bridge to the soul is my topic dr rita louise larry flaxman who was on ancient aliens on the discovery channel um lynette marie holistic living healthy food preventative medicine kind of idea phenomenal 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 memphis tennessee take a road trip Come a day early, hang out with me. I play music. Come see me play. The next morning we wake up. We go get some breakfast. We move on towards the spiritual fair. What's up, Enos Thibodeau? $20 for two days, $15 per day. There's going to be readers, spiritual readers, vending booths, best-selling authors, healers of all sorts, gemstones. It's just going to be packed. But the point is not to go over there as a novelty or entertainment to buy something and to take something away. We want you to take something away, but what we really want you to take away is a greater bliss, a greater level of empowerment that you can implement in your life. I have no doubt I've had psychic visions surrounding this event that Victoria Smith is going to be bringing forth that is going to be absolutely, completely successful. Four Points Spiritual Expo, September 1st and September 22nd. I am a keynote speaker. I think I'm going to, ne my next presentation, I'm going to give a rundown of the times of the keynote speakers. On Sunday, we're going to have a metaphysical spiritual panel. I am on that panel about the betterment of the community, not only Memphis community, tri-state community, but the community of wherever you are, community of the state, community of the country, the community of the world, how we can plug in and engage to a greater degree for a greater capacity of unfoldment about who we really are. 
Tonight's presentation is really going to be about a review of the work I have been doing. I am going to take questions from you shortly. I will bring up different talk points. And as we move into them, feel free to pose your question. Um, but I am holding out. I may do a couple of more presentations about the work I have been doing for the last couple of years, hammering on some key points. But I'm also now in this moment, as I declared to you, I didn't see this coming, making myself available for different truths that are yet to unfold that are integral for the times we're living in. The times we are living in. Boy, did you choose to incarnate on this planet at a delicious glorious time hello everyone Willie Daigle take a short pause get right back into the thick of this presentation which I have no notes none whatsoever I like it that way it's free freestyle for all you commandos out there who are free in it Wow, life-changing experience. It's called perspective. And two days ago, I gained a whole lot of perspective. I'll see you on the backside of this Laver de Soul music break. Life-changing experience, truly. Why not? played the song by Lavender Soul, Angel of Love, because there was one present with me and a friend of mine, and I'm grateful. Goodbye and 
Welcome back to Center of Light, Yanava. Keith Anthony Blanchard here. Tonight's presentation is back in the saddle again. I was not going to mention this. I was not going to mention this. I have no agenda in talking about this except to relieve my soul, my human self, about what happened to myself. And I don't want to name the other person by not asking them their permission of their privacy and if they're okay with that then they can tell me about this life-changing experience i was going to actually do a presentation going to the bathroom as i always do i get information what came to me was divulge it keith tell the story i tell the story not because i want everyone to go ooh, oh wow oh my gosh that's not what this is about Hi, Kim. Hi, Robert, my brother. I got a meeting with you soon. Jason, Katina. Ed says, inspiration. I love me some Ed, guitar playing, gunslinger. Linda says, it's okay. I'm going to tell you about my life-changing story, and Linda's as well. We went to South Louisiana with my son to see my dad, who was having tests for his heart to make sure everything was everything, and everything is everything. I don't care about the comments that you post. I, I appreciate it. I'm not interested in it. I'm not telling you this story, this life-changing story for any of that. I'm not. I don't want you to join me in a place that was not fun for me, nor Linda. So we go see my father for a week. On the way home, four minutes from the house, coming up, 55 North, we take what's called Malfunction Junction towards Nashville to our final destination, four minutes from getting back home. Where the ramp is about to merge on the highway, I'm looking at my phone, Linda's driving, fantastic driver she is. You see my nose? Bruises, cuts. So as I'm looking at my phone and Linda's driving, she says, oh my God, Keith, this purse, this guy is about to hit us. The car immediately begins to spin or begins to go out of control. 
and Linda is trying to right the situation by navigating the car. The car goes hard left and she steers it to the right to make up for the difference. And then we go hard right at 50 miles an hour. And that car has almost a... The turn ratio on this vehicle is crazy amazing. But the wheels grab and it turned this way. And when the car took a hard right this way, she counterpointed again. And we're going for the center wall, the medium. And we hit it. Here's the wall. And when we hit the wall, the car went up the wall and went over itself, barrel rolled three times. Linda described it perfectly after the fact. She said it looked like a tornado went off in the car. It's exactly what it looked like. So someone had to be going faster than 50 miles per hour to hit us, obviously, because if they were doing 55, we'd be in a queue or in a line. But what happened was this person was barreling down this road, already losing control. He was already already in his own situation before he ever touched Linda's car. Coming at us at ridiculous speeds and she looked in the rear view mirror and says, oh my God, this guy is about to hit us. Car, Linda's trying to navigate, wall, we go up the wall and we barrel road three times. When the car came to a stop, I am grateful that it landed face up correctly. The seat belt held me glued to that seat. I wasn't going anywhere. Basically, I was on an amusement ride, safe in a car that looked like a tornado was going off inside doing this thing on the highway. When the car came to a stop, as I got my wits about me, I looked to Linda, seeing that she's conscious and everything's okay, and I immediately told her to get out the car. Though you're not supposed to move in an accident, I knew she wasn't severely hurt. Because I didn't know if the car was leaking gas, I didn't know anything. I had to climb out of a window. I went around, paramedics, people were coming immediately. I knew they had Linda under control. I began to gather things, gather myself, First, things from the highway, Linda says, I think I have a broken arm. She had a broken wrist. She went to the hospital. I went to the hospital. I tell you this story because as John Berthelot, an often visitor in this forum, when I do these presentations, every morning he posts, be something, I'm going to paraphrase it. Be grateful today because tomorrow is not promised. That was true for me two days ago and Linda as well. We had just dropped off my 14-year-old son 10 minutes before. He would have been in the back seat. The car is completely smashed like an aluminum beer can if you walked on it upright. But thank God, the Volvos have a roll bar which saved both of our lives and pretty much came out unscathed. Everything in that experience slowed down, completely stopped, time stopped. And I felt the hand of God. I felt a presence, be it my mother, be it Linda's deceased loved ones, all of them together, I felt it. I told Linda I knew nothing was going to happen to us. I knew it. I tell you this story because it gave me perspective of what is more important that I may have forgotten about and metaphorically somehow let my life spin out of control. It brought me back to center back to a space of understanding the space that I live in of which I'm grateful for every day. 
it gave me a little more taste of grease. You can see it on my face. You're not promised tomorrow. But what you can do for yourself is submerse yourself in light, the presence of God. Because as I said, in that car, I felt it. When you realize that you walk away unscathed from a situation, that by a fraction of some other interval inserted into the equation that you could have left, it creates perspective. I have no issue with the other side. I don't. In fact, that's my whole life is about. It's connecting to the other side consciously in this meat suit. I didn't want to leave a 14-year-old child behind. Nor did I want to leave you, my friends, my family. I'm grateful. Welcome to Center of Light. Tonight we're talking about back in the saddle. In, and for those, if you want to pray, I would rather you send well wishes or visualization to the trauma, not only in the car accident of my nose and Linda's wrists and Linda's bruises and cuts. I am speaking about the trauma. I feel it come over me. Few, day before or yesterday, day before yesterday, it came over me. I pulled into Walmart, excuse me, all these to get some food, and I started crying in the parking lot. I wasn't sad. I wasn't afraid. The impact, not only the impact it had in my has in my life, the impact. Just because you don't hit anything in an auto accident, doesn't mean you don't feel shock waves of energy. People go into shock. Yesterday, I felt the shock when I started to cry in the parking lot. Invisible energy is every bit as dangerous as hitting a wall. The banging, the throwing around, the sudden stopping, all the organs in your body shifting. It can leave you in a post-traumatic stress disorder. If you want to offer up Prayers for Linda and I. Just send us light. That's all you have to do. See us as well and whole. Not please take this from them and none of that. That doesn't serve anything. See us as solid and whole human beings. Okay. Tonight we're talking about back in the saddle. I went to my dad's, got away for a week, back in the saddle, implying not because of the accident. Back in the saddle because I missed my work for a week. I, I truly missed it. It was great to be away from it. Again, it gave me perspective. So now I sit here tonight, fully involved, enjoying, again, a memory I've forgotten for a week of something that brings, brings me utter bliss. Back in the saddle again. I'm back after a week. I have no doubt in the very near future we're going to be speaking about different things. Lots of same words, lots of same principles and ideas. But I get the feeling this is going to be about things to come. You could call it intuition. You could call it being in touch with a divine man. You could call it prophecy. It doesn't matter what you call it. I know that I'm being pregnated, right, impregnated right now to tell you of what I don't even know what's to come. I just know it's coming. How do I know that? Because my life slowed down in that car. And I got a, a glimpse of eternity in that slowing down process. It gave me perspective. I know that myself and Linda was held by the hand of God. I have, I have no doubt whatsoever. None whatsoever. My gesture, as always, to my friends, my family, you, and to myself, on levels I don't even understand the connection I have consciously with spirit as how I'm able to bring forth such information and wisdom and knowledge and fun and inspiration is to prepare us for what we have no idea is about to come. This is not doom and gloom prophecy. This is not jump up and down and everybody let's go get a snow cone. This is just about the facts of the matter of the time you have chosen to incarnate into 
which is right here, right now, sitting on your chair, looking at your phone or your computer, watching this presentation. My work is to always empower you and to shower you with the grace that falls upon my face via my divine connection. And my job, my work, my will, my love is to always help you connect to your divine connection. How do you do that? Sometimes it takes an outside source. Myself, another teacher, a good book, a good piece of music. It helps us to fall in. Ah, and so that's where I really dwell. Now you can connect to the part of yourself by using a, a, such a catalyst as my teachings, other teachings, a great book, a great piece of music, so forth and so on. Because God is on the present. It's not only internal, which it is. It's the source of all creation. God is the naturalness of all things. The nature of all things is God. But it does not exclude the outside world. Because that outside world with all those people moving about in it have God in them also. Even the bad people. Even the Rockefellers. Even the... Uh, the Illuminati, even the, whoever those knuckleheads are. God is telling us something through everything in everyone, in every situation. Perspective. Back in the saddle again. Everything is going to, according to plan. Everything is going according to plan. Well, Keith, how can those bad things in the world be a part of the plan? It's not per se God's will for the bad things to happen. We first, in order to ever understand the dynamic that's happening in the world, you will never, you will never understand it until you understand the dynamic that is happening within you first. Until then, you will judge, blame the outside world. We will never understand God until we understand ourselves. It is impossible. I don't care what any scripture says. If you can't understand the puny, the finite, the little self, how can you ever grasp the infinite majesty that lives within? It's impossible. If you can't understand the, the you that lives in this reality about that much compared to infinity, you can never, I don't care what anyone tells you, you can never, will never be able to consciously Unite with your divine parent. Though you're not disconnected, what every spiritual seeker from every denomination, every walk of land, every creed, code, or sect, whether they know it or not, they are longing for connection, conscious connection, to divine parent. That car you want, divine parent. That job you want, divine parent. That lover you want, divine parent. Because in divine parent is everything in beyond you can possibly imagine. So in imagining this idea that I'm bringing forth, it creates a life-altering perspective. You don't want to have your world turned upside down three times on a barrel roll going towards a wall and have your life spin out of control while you're in the automobile, your body, as you try to move forward in your life to get to your destination, you call home. Only to find yourself, find yourself on the side of the road bleeding from your nose. As we review Center of Light's work for the last couple of years, Two years ago, I was still and 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 am still developing, always developing. I was still getting my groove on. I am now beginning to settle in my seat of my teachings, my life's work, 
why I am here. I was saved by the grace of God. So was Linda. She has great karma. Great karma. Car. Ma. My work ain't done just yet. Over the last year plus, we have been speaking about extraterrestrials. It's done. You don't ever have to kid yourself, believe, disbelieve anymore. It doesn't matter what you believe. You will never take away the fact and the reality. Not only are they coming, that they're here. You don't even have to accept the idea that you are part of they. That the whole reason you exist right here, right now, is because of your DNA. That is the final say. That you are a star seed, no matter who you are. You are part extraterrestrial. So the aliens exist. They're here. Don't get caught up in the hoopla about the bad ones. There are some bad ones. The ones who are here are watching over their investment. What do I mean by investment? I mean you. You are their investment. It's very possible in the near future you can be convinced or tr attempted to be convinced by the media that planet Earth is being invaded. Don't believe it. It's never going to happen. What will be happening if it comes out in the media that there are extraterrestrial ships in the skies and no one can deny it because it's on social media live like the movie Independence Day? It's because they have no choice but to announce live we're being invaded. But they know we, were, we are not. They want to keep you from the extraterrestrials because therein lies your liberation. Why? They don't care if you believe in extraterrestrials. They already know you believe in extraterrestrials. Then what is the problem? It's the technology. They don't want you shaking hands with universal technology that's been around billions and billions and billions and infinite on many different dimensions, bandwidths, frequencies that we have, can't even begin to understand. Beings exist. They want to keep you on a prison planet. <clears throat> That's not why you've come. You've come to liberate yourself first. Always first. And the masses second. We have been talking about chemtrails. Your skies, my skies, are being sprayed with aluminum, barium, horse shit, dog shit, pig shit, for multiple reasons. Why? To manipulate the weather, but also to vaccinate you. New information in it. In the skies being sprayed, you are being vaccinated. Those vaccines that you see come out in social media that say everybody says, don't take a vaccination, you're being vaccinated. This presentation tonight is not about that. Those people, those bad people, those overlords. Those overlords are doing what I'm telling you they're doing. But this is not about blame. I'm revealing to you, back in the saddle again, my past work and where we're going to be moving to. 
My work is always intended to be imbued with light, to empower you, not to put you in fear, not to blame the bad ones. It's not what I do. We've also talked about Monsanto. It's crumbling. The whole system of Monsanto is crumbling. It's being banned in state after state, country after country. We are winning. Are you listening to me? We're winning. Well, Keith, I kind of get the idea that we are a strong force, but I'm not sure we're winning yet. We are winning. I don't know what you see in your stream, but I know from the information and the sources of the people supplying this information, these are from credible people, credible sites, people with experience, people in in the divine matrix, so much so, I don't doubt the brothers and sisters that show up in my feed saying, check out this juicy piece of information that I found. We are winning. These guys are being sprayed. Okay, how do I protect myself? Since I don't have to be mad, you don't have to be mad, period, because there's nothing you can do about it. Yet. Or at least till now. Be a happy individual. In your happiness, dopamine, serotonin levels, all these different levels begin to work in your favor. And your immune system goes up. And the vaccinations or whatever it is they're putting in the chemtrails, whatever is happening in the world, will not affect you. How do I know that? I just got out of a life-changing car accident that flipped over three times that I should have died. I crawled through the window unscathed. So did Linda. That's how I know that when you live in the space of spirit, of loving yourself and goodness, you become closer to invincibility than before if you've never engaged yourself because you become valuable being on the earth you become a tool that god can wind its way through as a light worker that you came here to change the dynamic of this planet from a prison planet to we can all ascend to a place of a vibrational frequency of liberation you are a special individual no matter your situation. No matter your situation. I recently did a presentation on the city is burning. About the fire in Paris or in France. Notre Dame Cathedral. Churches are burning. The world is fucking burning. Everything is burning. The woods in California were burning. The world metaphorically is burning. How do you see this burning? Do you see this burning as a hellfire or a godfire? Do you see this burning as destruction? Because in the moment, it may look like destruction because a something is burning. But in hindsight, or does it take hindsight, can you see it immediately that in the burning of something that looks like destruction, what I see is restoration? I see the future model, the future archetype. Nothing is being destroyed. That's too mundanely focused. What I see is the potential of rebuilding the human spirit when everyone becomes involved. Today, in, in today's world, when something happened that moves the world into pain and misery because of what happened and shifts us into compassion, then said event becomes very beautiful because it does for us which, which, what we should do anyway, which is unite. So regardless, unity is going to happen through coming together on our own accord or coming together being slashed by the sword. So what is God's will in all this? 
If God is everything and that's all that exists, how could God's will be those things that are terrible? That's a perceptional game you're playing in your head. When you step back, again, perspective, that car wreck I just had a few days ago with Linda, thank God my son wasn't in it, gave me a very beautiful gift, perspective. I didn't enjoy flipping over the highway three times, going into a brick wall, but within it was a gift of perspective. So my life doesn't have to spin out of control. Like maybe on some levels, unconscious to me, unbeknownst to me, that I have. We have talked about many things on these presentations. I want to acknowledge people who are coming in. David Fike, Carl Laparou. Deborah Cook. Hi, Deborah. Out of the fires comes the feet. Blessed girl, out of the fire becomes the comes the phoenix. Thank you to all the angels that lifted you both from the vehicle. Thank you. Sandy, light workers unite. That's like wonder twin powers activate. <laughs> Hello, Elizabeth. First time listening, she says, yes, they're bad ones. Just like cats and good ones and bad ones. Yes, yes, yes. Hello, pretty. Carmen Shesha says, I am grateful your work for your work, my friend. Amen. Yeah. Hello. Hello, Mary. Hello, Holland. Holly. Hello, um, Heather. Nicole. Let's see who is here in the other part of the room. Uh, the other way in. Shasha. The Shasha with her nuggets was still here. Elwood, my brother. Linda. I'm glad you're well. Hope you're feeling better today. Kelly. Thomas. What's up, Thomas, bro? Adana. Hello, Adana. Lewis. So I enjoyed your video, bro, Lewis, about the black wolf. That was phenomenal. Was that you, Lewis, with the black wolf? Or was that just a video with someone that looked like you? David Fight, Robert Harrison, Callan Renando, Deb, Deborah Cook. I'm dodging the camera so I can see. And Mary Amalong. Robert Harrison says, your perspective was forming before you even were approaching that event. Yes, sir, it was. I have no doubt, and I think you were actually 101% correct. It was aligned powerfully. It was set up. It was purposeful. So, a quick recap of what I have been talking about. We have been talking about aliens for the last year. Chemtrails, vaccinations, the Vatican... Child, child abductions, human trafficking, children trafficking. Human trafficking goes off of the planet. Well, Keith, are you sure? We're still trying to figure out if there's life on Mars. Human trafficking goes off planet. You don't have to believe what I tell you. Open your mind, open the file, insert the, doc, the, the, do, uh, the document in the file, and shut the filing cabinet. But leave it open. You will see. Mushrooms, magic mushrooms are becoming legal. Marijuana, THC, CBD oil, it's legal. Not everywhere. But let me, let me give you a piece of prophecy or common sense a logic or self-evaluation. Myself, I know me very well. So in knowing myself very well, I understand the dynamic moving within me. So I understand the dynamic of me moving within the world. And the language I have with the world beyond talking. Yep, 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 blah, 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 blah. It's changing. The world is changing. Colorado 
has something going on. Let me tell you what they're doing. They're leading the way, and they're going to keep doing it. You will always see Denver leading the way. I'll tell you why, because they were the first to legalize. Well, not the first to legalize, but they made it very uh, a big bang in the decriminalization of marijuana. It's not about the marijuana. It's about the changing of the world. A couple other people followed on decriminalizing marijuana. Denver became the first to decriminalize magic mushrooms. Now you got this one. Now you got this one. The world, people, states, cities, this country, everybody, they're understanding that there's a new sheriff in town. Let me show you who that sheriff is. See that good-looking man with the cowboy hat riding that horse? I'm being silly. It's not me. But there is a new sheriff in town. And it's called the spiritual waking the fuck up trend. And everybody wants a piece of it. Because they already know the momentum of the world is going in that direction. They already know to be a part of the world is to get into the river, the river of that momentum, to ever have a chance to survive, not only physically in a car wreck, but physically, monetarily, to have a lifestyle on this planet. planet. Everyone knows the world is shifting. Some are afraid. Come hang out with me, I will throw you off the cliff. When you hit the water, you will realize you hadn't died. Then you will be exhilarated. Perspective, and you will be grateful. As well. Now everybody wants a part of banning Monsanto. That's phenomenal. Now everybody wants a part of legalizing marijuana and magic mushrooms. That's phenomenal. Do things responsibly, regardless. Now everybody wants a part of, now everybody wants a part of, but it always takes the first person, the first company, the first institution, the first state, the first whoever to start it off and create a trend. There is a spiritual illuminating trend that is happening all around the world. If you don't see it on social media, you need to incorporate new friends. It will give you perspective. It will change your world. I did a presentation a year ago titled, Facebook Blesses Me. People moan, groan, and bitch about Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook. I'm, I think it's brilliant. I have everything that I need as a tool using Facebook. But those people who moan and groan, bitch and complain about Facebook every day, they're on, ironically, Facebook moaning and groaning, bitching and complaining. Why not just be on Facebook and enjoy the ride? Cowboy. <laughs> I do know that in the very near future, the teachings are going to change. My teachings are going to change. There will be reminiscent of things of all that I always do. New information is going to come forth. How do I know this? I could just be telling you a bunch of shit. And even if I was, I'm going to make it happen. But I'm not. I know when I am being impregnated. A download, as it's called in the spiritual movement, if you will. People talk about ascension into higher levels of glory. That's true. Don't kid yourself. It's too much noise. You are already existing in the highest level of glory. Simply, are you aware of it? That's the task for everyone. And, though you, and when you acknowledge you're in the most sacred space you can ever be in, there's no other sacred space. 
You don't get to a more sacred space through time. You can have it right now. And whatever one you have is a sacred space. The object of the game of life is to expand so much so into it. You become conscious of the moving river that's moving you along. Whether you know you're being propelled or not, that's the gig. What is 5D? I've been hearing about the fifth dimension. We're going to ascend into 5D. Don't listen to the hype. You may shift into 5D, but it's not this thing you go buy at Walmart on sale for $2.99, reduced from $15. Your life is not promised. You can't end your contract early, but you can. How can those polarities coexist? Because they do. Contract can't end before it ends. Contract can end at any time. There's something else in between called a new agreement that you make with spirit unconsciously. That says, I'm ready to go. And Spirit says, I can see that you are. Let's check out. And like that, your life changes. Your world gets torn asunder. We have talked a lot about the different God men I have in my life. Bhagavan Sri Satya Sai Baba. Swamji. Paramahansa Yogananda. All these beautiful, illumined, God-lit, God-divine fire avatars. They're in your life as well. And it depends on your level of devotion to be in the divine ocean is what makes them present for you. To save you in a car wreck. To save you from someone who is jacking you around. To place you in the most perfect opportunity for expansion. That expansion can potentially look like something you don't want to happen in your life. Regardless, you will expand from it. Or your expansion can look like something you've always wanted. Either way, you get to expand. Just pay attention to what hand you are shaking. The one that is giving are the one that may feel forsaking. Make no mistaking about it. What's happening outside is irrelevant. What's happening inside is most important. Are you looking at all the elephants in your room? I'll see you soon. Be right back. I'm going to take questions. If you have any questions for me about any of the presentations you've seen with me in the past, aliens, angels, demons, devils, chemtrails, astral projection, dreams, expansion, whatever it may be, I'm going to be taking those when I return. I will see you shortly. Let's see if I can play something different. Let's look at... That's not there. Why isn't it? Ah, here's something I've been playing about. Lavender Soul. See you shortly.
Let's do that again. <laughs> Welcome back to Center of Light. I'm out of practice. Tonight we're talking about back in the saddle again. After a week of being out of town with my father and my family. Remembering my home, where I come from, South Louisiana. We have been reviewing my teachings for the last year plus. The bad people. Monsanto, vaccines, chemtrails, harp. All that bullshit and nonsense. Not blaming them. It's showing us something. Like the automobile accident I was in a few days ago. It showed me something. It gave me perspective. My life for eight seconds was spinning out of control. It gave me perspective. The world seems to be spinning out of control. Are you able to take in and reach a level of perspective 
to be grateful as a light worker of the center of light federation. I am the center of light. You are the center of light. We're all center of light. It's a federation. It's a mission. It's an obligation and a duty that you came here to fulfill. Are you doing your part? Are you doing your part when you can? Are you doing it even when you sleep? Is it default in you? Is it second nature in you? To where everything you are is about changing you. You. Change you. Not that you're broken. Aspire to the golden ring that may be just out of your reach for the moment until you reach then it becomes in your grasp you can touch it for now then you can touch a little more of it then you can put your hands on it then you can bring it into your fold this is the prophecy that has been told and will forever be told to every one of us on this planet has been bought and sold by the idea that humanity first leads the way. Humanity first. Not you. Humanity. True devotion to Jesus, to God in any form, Buddha, Krishna, whatever you worship, whatever it is that is beautiful to you, that gives you a sense of connectivity and power. Doesn't matter what you call it. When that preciousness of whatever that thing is takes precedence over yourself, that is devotion. And now you're surrounded by God's grace who could save you in a time and space when your world spins out of control and hits a wall and barrel rolls only until you realize, oh my God, I was saved by the grace of God. Or we can do the pre-work to realize our very existence is by the grace of God. And then you become ever more invincible. The principle alone I impart to you should be enough. My friend Bo asked the question. We're now going to take questions. If you've been in my presentations, hello Alex, hello Cheryl. Pri, Dina, Tandy. Bo asked the question. If you have a question or comment you would like to post about my future, my past presentations, now's the time to do it. If you have something that you're curious about that I may be able to shed light on, I know that my teachings are going to change. A lot of it is going to be prophetic. Do I claim to be a prophet? No, I don't, but I am. We are all prophets. It depends on the person who has the capacity to see. I have a capacity to see. I've done the work. I'm still doing the work. Join me in the work so we can one day play. My friend Bo asked the question. I'm going to look for it. That feed has moved. Hello, John Talbert. Robert says, say Yanava three times real fast. Yanava, Yanava, Yanava. <laughs> so my brother, Bo, asked a question. I'm looking for it. I would say I believe, I think we're speaking about, nope, that's not the one. Hello, Joanne Kissler. Joanne, we have a date, I think maybe tomorrow or Tuesday. Joanne, you, weren't, you were not here earlier. I don't want anyone's sympathy or sorrow or I'm so sorry. I was in an automobile accident, so I'm trying to get back together, which I'm, I am there now. Contact me, please, tomorrow, Joanne. I do have a, uh, an appointment with you about future Center of Light Radio collaborative work. Bo James says, if we have a dream about contact with extraterrestrials, is it really a dream? There's a question for everybody. Fantastic question. 
Fantastic question, bro. So basically, Bo is asking the question. If I have a dream that I was aboard an extraterrestrial craft, am I dreaming or is it real? Well, I can tell you, you're having at least a real dream, a real experience, What it, it whether it's actually truly under the umbrella of dream or experience can be somewhat seen as a very gray area or almost irrelevant. Because the experience of what is taking place for the person is real. Is it not? That's their reality in, in that moment. So in such a way, one is having an extra experience. You are terrestrial. And as a terrestrial, you're having an extra experience that you don't normally have. So that would be an extra experience terrestrial experience but that's not the question you're asking the question you're asking is if i have a dream scenario be it a dream or real does it mean i'm am i dreaming or am i having a real one you know that by how present you are in the experience that you know oh my god i have a body laying on a bed somewhere and right now in this moment i am hyper conscious and present if you go that far and have that much, you are no doubt having a lucid experience. Now, because you wake up in the morning and you review what happened to you last night while you were asleep on that movie screen that flashed by that might have been about extraterrestrials, does not nullify the fact that you may have had an extraterrestrial visit on a ship. Nor does it mean that when you have a very lucid experience that you had an extraterrestrial experience. It can mean that your mind has painted a picture in such a way that you understand that you are having a beyond normal experience. See, it's all the way gray, but it's all true. The only way you will ever understand what I'm divulging and sharing with you is by inner work. But there is a truth that will resound with you, not in the head. Well, I believe that I could have been on a ship last night because I saw a movie on a screen and there were other people and they didn't look like us. Something inside you will know. You may not even recall what they look like. You may not even recall being on a ship. You will know through your feeling. I had an experience last night with a somebody, an angelic being, on, on some place, no angelic being, I was on watching a star being born, you may not be able to recall the details and what you know as a sensory object, sight, but true sight will tell you, you left what you know as you last night, to experience something which is truly of your own divine nature. It requires diligence, both in everyone, of doing the work, and understanding through many years of practice. For many years, it felt like I was on a ship or visiting with others. But now that I've had many experiences that I absolutely know bones to soul, I was on a ship. You begin to be able to detect an honest, solid experience from one that the mind was fabricating metaphorically to share something that you needed to decipher. Uh, let's see who is in the room asking a question. What's up, my Broham Lincoln? Broham Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln. What's up, Shannon? Lefevre? Saturday night, Lefevre. Deborah asked the question. Hi, Deborah. Says, I used to dream, I used to have this dream about being contained in this complex of different layers and always wanting to get to the top and over the side of the complex to get to the woods. All I wanted to do is go into the woods. The first thing that comes to heart for me, for you, Deborah, is I understand your attempt to want to see greater than what's in front of you. 
In other words, this seems like possibly a block I want to get up and over so I can see the vastness of what I know lies on the other side. Right? That's exactly what you're saying, and I know you would agree with that. The first thing that came to me was, not always are we able to see the forest through the trees. So being up and over, though that is your beautiful intention, may not have served you as well as it could have if you went through the wall versus over it. Because when we go to the forest and we go up and over it, we actually miss the forest because we're not able to see what is present. But I get the feeling you're done with that. In fact, I'm sure of it. You're done with that. You're actually able to be in the present versus, I have to go one step further over this wall or through this thing. This speaks to all of us to be able to see. It's through this thing that catapults me into the experience of true seeing. I don't want to see what's over the wall. I want to see through the wall, through it. I want to use the wall as a catalyst so that through it I can see perspective. It changes your entire spiritual dynamic. Kelly says, yes, Bo says, what does the woods mean to you? It's all relative. What does the woods mean to you? And then you can encode, decode the messages that are for you inherent. Kelly asks, I am having migraines again. How can you tell if it is emotions or something else or both? Kelly, Kelly, it is both. It's always both. Thoughts trigger emotions. Emotions convince us that it's real. Thoughts launch the, the object of our desire, whether it's a desire that we are truly desiring or not. Thoughts trigger emotions. Emotions have a greater density which wants to convince us that that's who I am. It's not. You're beyond the... We pretty much can understand that we're beyond the, uh, the, the vibrations of thought and ment mentality, ment the, our mental base. It's a little more challenging to move out of the feeling because feeling, wow, it's so there. Thoughts of fleeting emotions a little more planted. So yes, Kelly, it is thought and it is feeling. Your, migra your migraines, for me, has to do with pressure. Thought pressure. Blows up like a balloon. And to the mind can't expand, so to speak, anymore because now there's surface tension. What is a headache? It's tension. There's tension. So much to the level it's a migraine. I want to read that question again. The feed did move. Kelly, what you can do to alleviate this is to understand obviously you understand that I'm not my mind I have a mind that thoughts move through like clouds as I said the emotions can be a little more challenging you're not that either be the observer oh my god Keith you don't understand that when I'm in that headache it's got my attention oh I get it dear one I get it lovely I get it when that car was spinning and I was in that accident a few days ago it was real, but I forgot that I was hunkered in a seatbelt being protected. In other words, what I'm saying is, I'm not the car or my life spinning out of control. I am the grace that's being held into place and saved. In such a way, Kelly, you can do the same. When something has you overwhelmed and it's pulling, pulling you into the experience, the pain, 
there is a difference between pain and suffering. I have a migraine. Yes, it's painful. I'm asking you to check yourself, Kelly, to see if some part of you is invested in suffering. It may feel like you're suffering with a migraine. I can't speak for you because I've never had a migraine, ever. I know the dynamic of spiritual law. Remove yourself from the experience and let the smaller you experience the pain and you will still feel it but i promise you it will subside just as effective as ibuprofen works trust me back off you don't want to dismiss the pain that is trying to like deborah see the forest through the trees going over the wall deborah says i love the trees i love the woods i like walking in them so she wants to launch herself over the wall but you have to move through the wall same with you, Kelly. You, you can't launch yourself out of the migraine, but you can by launching yourself through it to find yourself in true perspective. My lower self is feeling that migraine. And now from an observer point of view, I send my lower self, lower metaphorically, quote, Compassion, because the you up here is not in pain. You're just the observer. You have dialogue with your deeper self. You can never move. You can think that you move around or over something. That's what we think we are doing in such situations. That is not what you're doing. What we are doing in such a way is we are deluding ourselves. It may be cool and it may cause temporary. It may cause temporary comfort, but it's not long-lasting. Bo, that is fucking poetic. What is the core problem reaching the spiritual goal of freedom? That is the question you must find. In fact, Bo, I'm going to up your game and support you even further. The core problem of reaching the goal of spiritual liberation is one thinking that they have a goal of spiritual liberation to reach. If you do not accept your spiritual liberation now, thinking that you're going to reach for one and one day meet it creates the separation between having it now until that one day your spiritual liberation is now it may come in a future experience where you have the ultimate epiphany but thinking that one day i'm going to be spiritual liberated is you as the creator of your life creating the situation that one day i'm going to reach my goal of spiritual liberation you can't reach spiritual liberation as a child of the light and as a child of god you are spiritual liberation deborah says holy shit keith that was insane your car accident thank you i walked away from a situation i could simply have died volvo has to be one of the most amazing safest vehicles on the earth they have a roll bar that car was squashed like a beer can being walked on. The roof, because of the roll bar, was intact. Tonight we're talking about lots of things I have brought forth in the past. The bad people. Kim Trails vaccinations, all Monsanto, all that stuff. But from an empowered point of view, hello, Andrew Rapin. Angelo and I are going to be starting recording a new album really soon. Bernard is back in town from Europe. Lavender Soul. Angelo, I'm excited. I'm going to play a Lavender Soul song here shortly. Hello, Angela Tyner. Pensy Ryland. What's up, girlfriend? 
my teachings are going to be shifting. How do I know that? When I was hurling through the air in that potential life-changing car accident, time slowed down, and I was being held by the grace of God's hand. I felt it. Please send me your questions while I take a lavender soul break. We'll be right back. Peace, love, and dear Lord, as my day would say, live in the light. Let's see. We need our divine lover in this time of earthly human change. I will be with you all. Until the end of time, you will never be alone. I am. Welcome back to Center of Light, Yanaba. Here.
Tonight's presentation title is Back in the Saddle. Again, coming back from South Louisiana, seeing my father, my family playing music, reminiscing about my childhood. Had a life-changing experience. Hindsight is very beautiful. Gave me perspective. I'm going into vessel mode. I wasn't expecting it. I feel it expanding inside of me, taking my consciousness, what I know as me, away from me, so to speak. And it begins to infuse inside of me. In this beautiful expression of my life's work. Why I know I am here. You are going to die one day. And there's nothing you can do about it. Nothing. What are you doing with that time? That place, that space, and that opportunity. You may have children, and you're living that life, and that's the most amazing thing. Family is everything. But do you have something that you can call not only your own, that is so powerful, magnificent, and beyond your life that you can equally have. You don't have to sacrifice one for the other because if you sacrifice one for the other, you're not living wholly, completely, and fully, are you now? So you incorporate it. It's all-encompassing. It's all-inclusive. You're going to die one day. Ironically, you will forever live. What are you doing with this precious time? If you're the, quote, average person and you leave this world, your next reality is going to be in a level of spiritual bliss, a place you've long forgotten since you've been born. But if you use your time to make it not about you, I get it. Some ego is invested because it is about you. It's about you engaging yourself to create attention to yourself as a way shower so others can see you because now you are visible. That requires ego. In a beautiful way. So others can now learn from your example. So that when you do pass, versus having a mediocre blissfulness in the spiritual dimension, that you get to live in greater degrees of the divine matrix, closer to the space of creator. So basically, when humanity becomes first, 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 doesn't exclude your wife, your husband, or your children, does not. It's incorporated. When you make humanity, including your wife, husband, children, family, friends, first, the greater the bang of light glory you experience when you die, which is going to happen to you one day, whether you like it or not. So are you using however long you live on this earth as a conscious rite of passage into higher realms of glory. Or it can take you many more lifetimes, and that's okay. You're not in trouble. To the level that you live fully within yourself is going to be the level you will live fully into conscious spirit when you die. Parable, the crucifixion of Christ and the two thieves. And the one thief says, and Jesus says, I will remember you. The point is, to whatever level of devotion you have 
towards the greater good is the level you will live in the divine ocean of the absolute goodness. But you have to understand it's not about you. Ironically, it's only about you. Because you can only change the world when you change yourself. And in changing yourself, you change humanity, which is truly the end game in the first place. Again, hello, Chris Summerhill. Let's see what my sister Pri says. I hope you enjoyed your time and shared soul love with your father, Keith. I kiss my dad on his head like I've never kissed my father. I did. And when my father does pass, I'm going to be the male patriarch of the Blanchard family. I didn't realize that till this moment. That comes with a responsibility, an obligation and a duty, and a price that has to be paid. What is that price? that I am severing the lineage of unconsciousness in my family. Nothing ugly, or desecrating, or belittling, or trivializing the beauty of my family. But the lineage stops with me. Do I have to tell everyone in my family that it all stops with me? No, I don't. I have to live it. I have to become the living testimony, just like you. We all do. You are here to change yourself. In so doing, you change the world. How is your world? Is it lovely or is it spinning out of control on any level? There's no judgment involved. But you be the judge of yourself by using your discernment. Because what you see in your present experience as you look out into this world will graduate when you cross over. I see lots of beauty in the world. I see some darkness. You graduate to the other side. You will see lots of beauty in your, your experience and graduated experience of negativity. Wherever you go with or without a body, you are. Because you are still you with or without your meat suit. I am taking any more questions if you have them. I've been here for an hour and 40 minutes living in pure bliss and joy being with you. Now's the time to ask your questions about dreaming, sleepwalking, sleep paralysis, sleep paralysis out of body experience, alien contact, my deceased loved ones, spirituality, Jesus, Buddha, God. Not that I know all these things. I don't have to know all these things. I'm not really interested in knowing these things, though I do know lots. I fall inside and I trust the level of my connection to whatever, whatever it is that is beneficial in the moment. It could be absolute horseshit. But manure does fertilize crops quite nicely. Everyone always gets what is needed in the moment. So reality can be fudged to take us to the truth. But the truth can never be fudged. Or harsh shit fudged. Sometimes Something they, that may not be true can be so on point and purposeful to lead you to a truth so that when you use your discernment, in contrast, you can say, this is nonsense. So the nonsense did show you something quite beautiful. Like the car accident I was in the other day, because the car accident was not the truth of who I am. It was nonsense that I've somehow created in my life 
that taught me a greater lesson in the absolute truth, which is perspective. As I mentioned recently, tonight, and often, my teachings are now going to shift more so into prophecy. Not because I want to be right and say, everybody look at Keith, he's in the, in, on the game. It's feeling me inside. That I, my work now is to be of greater service, is to prepare everyone for what is coming down the pike by using current situations to foresee all of us to foresee, foresee, to see into the future so we can make the choices now so we don't have to be in an accident to create perspective. Foresee. To see for a reason. Trust me when I tell you this world is about to rock and roll in levels you never thought possible. And you will be attempted to be influenced into the shenanigans and the tomfoolery and the horseshit. How do I know where I stand in all of it? You don't. That's scary. Goddamn right it is. But now I'm going to throw you a grace bone. Not on this. The times have changed so much so, it's important that you don't know where things are going. But that you find yourself planted in no matter what. There is no turning back. There's nothing you can do about it. You can't stomp your feet enough. You can't blame enough. You can't be upset enough. It's over. The pity party standing on your soapbox drama is over. It's over. It's fucking over. Your new information is that you find yourself, like Peter, planted like a lightning rod, no matter what happens. Roxanne Smith, hello, beautiful. Chris Summerhill says, your positive words have touched me. Keep up the good work, brother. Chris, I haven't seen you much. If we're not friends yet, in fact, I'm doing it right now. I'm coming to find you. I'm coming to stalk you, bro. <laughs> I see you hanging out with Big Daddy from Leonard Skinner. Dig it, man. Yeah, love it. So the new information is this. Jesus, take the wheel. Take your seat belt off. And you will avoid the car accident. And the results therefrom. Your world is rocking and rolling. And it requires you to be the needle on the record player. To carve a new groove into your life song. So that as your life song plays out, you no, need, no longer need to bind yourself. To protect yourself. To shield yourself that could potentially be out of control. You need to find yourself planted stable in the nonsense. I have no doubt these are the teachings that are going to be coming forth. As spirit moves through my vessel, as I intend spirit to move within me and to take full control of my life. you will begin to see things you never thought possible. In the crypto world, in the paranormal world, in the never you thought possible world, and in the everything you knew was going to happen world, and everything you thought was beautiful world, all of it, times a thousand. It's happening now. Welcome to the other side. Hyperfertile field, you are being planted as you plant yourself. Now what germinates, blossoms, and grows 
is truly up to you. I am warning you. And loving you at the same time, I am warning you. It has a gloom and doom overtone. Good. It will suffice. Get your shit together. Because whether you know it or not, winter is coming. Winter is coming. And I don't mean come October in a few months. Winter is coming. It doesn't mean that it's doom and gloom. It means that if you live in fear by the unknown, which you're not ready for, even a peaceful person will get cold because winter is coming. I'm afraid. Don't be afraid. Bring your coat. Prepare yourself. Bring your divine coat of grace that you will be cloaked with. It's not doom and gloom. It's you need to plant yourself for things you never thought possible, never thought existed, never things, you, all that. It will become mandatory for everyone to re-examine what we think is divine. Hold on tight. One more short pause of Lavender Soul. I get the feeling Yana Vaz going to step forward. I want to acknowledge everyone. Elwood, thank you, my beautiful friend. Linda, my beautiful friend. Shasha, Rena, Chris, Pri, Louis, Tandy, Dina, Kelly, all of you. You are so important to me. I couldn't wait to get back in the saddle again, the title of this presentation, to be with you in this way. It fills me inside. I feel connected. And because of the perspective I've recently gained, I will do this for the rest of my life because it fills me. Give me right back. You're not going to speak. See you shortly. Let me see what song I'm going to play. How about some uh uh? I was going to play perfect anyway, every way, but it's not on my thing. Why? How about, since we're talking about being together and the importance of humanity first, humanity is your religion. It's not Christianity. Christianity seems that it's about humanity. And if Christianity is about humanity, then it's really not about Christianity, it's about humanity. <laughs> El Buddhism, a Muslim, humanity is always being pointed out as first, no matter the doctrine, code, creed, sect, walk, talk. Humanity first. Then your humanity, your humanity becomes Christianity. Then your humanity becomes Buddhism or Muslim. So guess what? In your humanity, your humanity, you become all of them. How glorious is that? You don't have to be one wedge on the universal pie called Christianity or Muslim or Zoroastrianism or Sikhism. You become the whole cake. You're not just a slice. It's about being connected to that which is beautiful. And that which is most beautiful is you when you connect to your humanity. That is the spiritual law. That is the prophecy. That is being foretold through this platform, Yanava, Center of Light Federation. You are. And forever, I will be. Okay. 
in rhymes. The breath you take is part of mine. As you float before my eyes, you touch my hand, it makes me cry. Just to know you're there. Just to know you're there. So here we go again. Life the songs with a friend. Another chance to let love in, and in another life, our eyes will meet one more time. I see. Welcome back to Center of Light. Why do I do this with this dollar flashlight I bought from Dollar Tree? Because in that is everything. It doesn't require scripture. It doesn't require rocket science. Truly. It's a white slate. In that is everything. Everything you can possibly want. So the question becomes, how do I become that so I can have everything I possibly want? It's not about having everything you possibly want. It's simply about becoming that. And in so doing, you get everything you possibly want. What is that? What is the this? We call it light. 
But in it is information, pure potentiality, eternity. Everything that can possibly ever exist, exists in the frequency of the highest light. You exist because the frequency of the highest light. So why am I not aware of my frequency of the highest light? That's the question every sentient being in the universe is posing to themselves. The teachings are going to change. I know this in my soul. I am the soul bringing it forth. Yanava speaks. Welcome, fellow Yanavites, on this night imbued with the deliciousness and the power of grace and might. Let's get real, down to the deal as we peel off the band aid of your wounds. Spirit is not here to place a band aid nor salve or tincture on those wounds, but to peel it away and pour salt into it. That salt that makes you hyper aware that you have salt in your wound. Piss and vinegar, to make you piss and vinegar mad so that we can move you beyond that into a space of being ultimately blissful, joyful, and glad that you hear the plight on this night of the light that's gonna be coming down the pike for you in the near presentations. Mm. the salt of the earth. Lot's wife, in reality or metaphorically, it's all irrelevant, metaphorically, she turned to salt by looking over her shoulder at the city she was told not to do, looking towards the past, which will never last. And in such a gas, she became solidified as the salt. Spirit uses that very salt for a lot so he can turn and look towards his future. Same idea. Spirit will begin to use that very salt that may seem to burn you in your tenderness wounds with the intention of helping you look towards your future. Basically, what his spirit is saying in the example of Lot are you looking around your life a whole lot to see what you have, what you've got, and what you are willing to release as you look towards your future so that you can understand and finally see that through the silence, the new world will suddenly appear. Basically, here's a new approach for you never thought Spear would ever bring to your attention that I will mention for your ascension. As you come into this form in the near future, you may find it often upsets you. Great! But you can't leave. When you get upset, don't leave. Stay. It's yours if you may. And choose to play with spirit. I want to piss you off. Why would spirit ever say such a thing? Why would it not? I am here to peel, peel your band-aid off of your wound. And to open it up. Open it up. So that we can pour the salt of the earth. Salt is considered a seasoning. We're here to season you. For now is the season. Doesn't require a reason, though we can find an infinite amount of them happening all around you, can we not? Should I get off the pot? 
It's basically what it comes down to. As spirit will begin to push, dare you ask a question in this forum, for you will be answered. Can you handle it? Goddamn right you can. Are you willing to? That's up to you. See? Perspective. Car wreck. Is your life a wreck? Is your life spinning around uncontrollably as the vessel found himself in just a couple of days ago? Life-ending possibility. Life-finding possibility. He found potential. He found perspective. See how beautiful such a horrible event could have been? See how beautiful your life is? And such a horrible events that unfold all around you as you claim them to be? Do you see? <laughs> it's crazy, spirit knows. And in the craziness, as you would call it, the spirit grows within you. Again, the world you deem as whatever it is you deem it to be is crashing. But I have a great grasp on life, you may say. Be willing, because all illusions will fall. Are you hearing this call? In the future, as you come into this forum, you will be challenged on purpose. You can blame the vessel. Don't shoot the messenger. Don't shoot the message. Because what you are really going to do in the future as the vessel begins to outpour is shoot yourself in the foot. So in other words, you being back into your spiritual corner of belief and foolery and nonsense. Lovingly, you will be but will you see? It's of your own doing. And when you stop screwing around, <laughs> it's only when you will be found. Spirit now begins to push, starting in this moment. And forever to tell you you're not going to like the burden of the weight that will be placed upon your shoulders in your lap in your heart in your consciousness as your responsibility because now the tables are tilting but we want to exponentiate that tilt dear ones to the hilt no longer time to cover yourself with a quilt But to open up and express and stand up and declare what is truly fair in life. What is fair is that you share these words of devotion that always has the vessel living in the divine ocean. And the motion of energy that has now begun to happen to all of you. Do you not see that? Do you not experience it? That's rhetorical. That's nonsensical. You already know that's happening to you. Is it hard for you to grasp hold? You already have the answer to that as well. You will be challenged in this forum. Because the responsibility is going to place, be placed on you individually and solely. S-O-U-L-Y, solely. S-O-L-E-Y, solely. You. And you will feel that many of the messages and about not, are not about everyone in the forum, but speaking directly to you as to why you may not like it. That's okay. That's exactly what you want to have happen for you to have magic happen in your life as you exit the box 
right? Do you want this level of teachings? Many will want to run away, while others salivate and run too. Do you want this? It's yours for the taking. It's yours for the making it all up. Humanity leads the way. You don't. You may be a voice, but humanity leads the way. You don't. Humanity. And spirit will check you on the jaw, on the chin, a pat on the back, a knock on your head, a kick in your groin, a peeling off of a band-aid to pour salt in your wound, or to lovingly kiss you on your face with grace to say that you are being blessed. Time's infinity. Prepare yourself for what you never thought possible. Let me say that again. Prepare yourself for what you never thought possible. Prepare yourself for what you never thought possible. Your greatest joy and your greatest demon. It's all not up to you. It's all in you. And it's being forced out. The snake charmers with all their snake oils are coming through with their healing and their toils. It all boils down to what you do with this in this moment. How much time do I have? <laughs> you are no longer living in time. You are living in space. What space are you living in? I love you. The teachers are changing. They're elevating. Spirit's light always reveals shadows. So here's the gig. This is not only on you. In fact, who it's on, it's on me first. As the platform, as the vessel. My work, I have to step it up to understand the message that was conveyed, that was laid down before me. Not before you, it's down before me. I heard this from me. So in order for me to ever have anyone understand me as a teacher, I ha have to understand the teachings myself. So now I have a challenge before me, and I lovingly accept it. I'm prepared to get my spiritual ass whipped to bring me into a state of consciousness. Jesse Berthelot, what's up, Roham? Michelle Noonan. Kayleen, hello, Kayleen, Bob, Lynn, Jamie says, what is up with this year? I just feel so lost, so very lost, like everything is falling apart and I just want to keep it all together. Jamie, I'm going to share with you, I don't know how long you've been here. As to why you posed the question, because I said the answer, but I'm thinking you may have just showed up, so I'll share it again. Spirit is no longer walking on eggshells or kid gloves. That's, those days are done. Whatever condition our life is in, high, low, up, down, in, out, good, bad, spirit doesn't see any of that duality. It just sees you as you are. If a wound in any of our lives is being opened up, opened up, not opened up for salt to be poured in to create pain, but a wound, an emotional wound, whatever the wound may be on any level, opened up that salt is being poured in it, is to create an awareness. Oh my God, that hurts. Well, of course it hurts. And now your awareness is paying attention to what you think hurt is. It's not about self-induced suffering, and it's not about spirit trying to wound you any further. Spirit is trying to call your attention to the wound. Hence, you become the salt of the earth 
because you are made of the earth and now that salt of mother earth is being poured is to bring about a birth in you that's what mother energy does it brings about a birth in you you don't have to like it it requires you to be present so that you understand that the opportunity that lies before you is of the most grand experience you can possibly have. Hence, can you see the forest through the, through the trees? You can never go over the wall. You can never go around the wall. You can only go through it. And in so doing, you dissipate it. And you graduate it as you integrate it and initiate it into your experience. Do you understand? Two minutes to midnight. Are you excited about midnight like it was ringing in the new year? Or is your two minutes to midnight? Or are you living in all fear? Healing is afoot. Not only for you, but for the entire world. Do you see it? I do. John Wright, my bro ham sandwich. Good to see you, John. Everyone, thank you for joining me on Center of Light tonight. The teachings will shift. I will revisit past points as spirit deems them to be. Whatever spirit says is important. But I know that I'm being downloaded and impregnated with new information. Not new information makes Keith special above anybody, anybody other than their teachers. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm speaking about... I'm changing inside, and I know the information is going to be more about future. Though it is required that you are present to ever, ever understand our future potential. I'm trying to understand it myself. Talk about soulmates. You are the love of my life. You are the love of my life. I've never wanted anything greater. And I understand that now. How do I understand that? Because I now understand me. Humanity leads the way. My husband, my wife, my girlfriend, my boyfriend left me. Humanity leads the way. When everyone lives in bliss, you get to ride the coattails of billions of people being in bliss. And the grace of your bliss exponentiates to levels you never thought possible. I'm thinking possible. I'm moving there. Join me there. And there we will meet. Peace, love, love.